Hey's up guys, this is Patrick Kura, your prof next door, and for today's video, we will be discussing financial statement analysis. One of the topics in management accounting that you can use in real life is financial statement analysis because it pertains to the interpretation of the data and information given to you in the company. What are the objectives of financial statements? Basically, the objective is to provide information about the financial position, the financial performance, and cash flows of an entity that is useful the wide range of users in making economic decisions that is based on international accounting standards number one or AIS one. So in short, the one that we prepare when it comes to financial statement are those information that are useful among decision makers. Okay, because not all information given to the company or are available in the company are useful in our interpretation. What are the financial statements that we have? Basically, we have five components of financial statements. First is the statement of financial position. The old name is balance sheet. Then next, we have the statement of comprehensive income, known recently as income statement. And currently, they are planning to change it into statement of financial performance. Then we have third, statement of changes in owner's equity. The cash flow statement, where different kinds kinds of activities, operating, investing, and financing. And lastly, we have the notes to financial statements. So when you present to your decision makers the complete set of financial statements, the arrangement would be like this. So the first one is a statement of financial position, then the comprehensive income, then the changes in equity, then the cash flow, and lastly, we have the notes. What is financial statements? Analysis. It involves the evaluation of the firm's past performance in Nakaraan, the present condition, and the business future potentials by way of careful analysis of its financial statements pertaining to matters like profitability, ability to meet obligations, safety of investment, and effectiveness of management. Okay, so in short, all the information in the past will be used in order to evaluate what is happening right now and then we will project it in the future, so what will be the potential of the company. Now, we have five different FS analysis tools and techniques. And these techniques have different functions. Parang kapag nasiraan ka ng sasakyan, yung gulong, kailangan mong palitan. Of course, we have different tools that we use. Hindi naman lahat ng mga nasa toolbox mo ay gagamitin mo din sa pag-fix ng gulong mo. So, Examples of financial statement tools is we have horizontal analysis, we have vertical analysis, we have financial ratios, then we have gross profit analysis, and we have cash flow analysis. For today, we will be discussing the first two, horizontal analysis and vertical analysis. For the subsequent videos, we will focus on financial ratios. We will not cover gross profit analysis and cash flow analysis. Okay, let's go with horizontal analysis. So when we say horizontal analysis, it is also known as your trend or index analysis. It involves the comparison of figures shown in the financial statement of two or more consecutive periods. So the formula in order for you to compute our change is current year value minus base year value all over base year value. It compares the actual amount with the budgeted amount or you can also compare two actual amount the last year figure and the this year figure however in using horizontal analysis we have limitations that is if the base year is zero or negative the interpretations cannot be made <laughs> now let's have an example so in here as you can see we have period one and period two being the base is the period one so we have line item 1 in here, so you can see it's 40, and period 2 it's 75. So when we get the difference, 75 minus 40, if we get 27, and divide that by the base year value, which is 48, you will arrive at a 56% change, and that's an increase. While on line item 2, the base year is 24, 
and in period 2, it's 1, 9. So the difference will be 1, 9 minus 2, 4, you have negative 500. Divide that by 2, 4, you will arrive at a change of 21%. The negative there stands for the decrease, pumaba siya compared sa period 1 or your base year. As we all know, the other name for horizontal analysis is trend analysis. Where we have three types of trend, okay? In analyzing your financial statements, you have the uptrend, where in in every year that you compare, the percentage change increases. While when we say sideways trend, there is no change; it is fixed, okay? Regardless of year. While when we say downtrend, the amount changes; it decreases through time. So as you can see, when you compare downtrend, there is always a negative in the percentage. Now let's go to vertical analysis. These are statements which are also called your common size statements or percentage composition statements. In here, we compare figures in the financial statements of a single period. It involves conversion of amounts in the financial statement to a common base. So from amount, we will convert it into percentages, like what we have done with horizontal analysis. Kung nasa isang financial statement ka, dun ka na. Hindi mo gagamitin yung figure from other periods, okay? So, why do we use vertical analysis? It is used to compare, number one, multiple years of data from the same firm, okay? Number two, it is used to compare companies in different sizes. So, for example, if I want to compare my uh, food business to Jollibee, of course, if we will use the amount, we cannot see the growth of my own company because Jollibee is such a big company. So, what are we going to do? We convert them into percentages because your percentage are your common size, okay? So, para tas compare natin kung ano ba yung performance ko dun sa mga uh, other players in the industry or to my competitors. And number three, we need uh, we use it to compare the company to the industry average. When we say industry average, this is the overall performance in that specific industry divided by the number of players in that industry. Kasi is in intercomparability. An example. This is an example of an income statement vertical analysis. So from net sales, you will go down to net income. And in here, the 100% figure is your net sales. So ito po, 100% your net sales mo. Iko-convert mo lahat ng mga amounts dun sa income statement mo as to your net sales. So for example, cost of goods sold is 12,693. Divide that by 35,119, you will get your percentage of 36.1%. So using vertical analysis, you will understand kung alin ba dun sa mga items sa income statement mo yung nagko-consume ng big chunk na galing sa net sales mo. Okay? So as you can see in here, let's have your net income. Your net income is 11,809. Divide that by 35,119, it means that your net income is 33.6% of your net sales, okay? Now, let's go to your balance sheet. In your balance sheet, your 100% figure is your total assets and your total liabilities and equity. So, yung 100%. Okay? So, ikaw convert mo lahat ng mga figures mo sa assets mo, current and non-current, as to your total assets para malaman mo ilan yung percentage composition ng cash mo, ng accounts receivable, inventory, etc. etc. So in this problem, your cash is 14,259. Divide that by 207,000, you will get 6.9%. It means of your total assets, 6.9% is your cash. Okay? On the other hand, let's go to your total liabilities and equity. We have, for example, your Retained earnings. So retained earnings is 103,785. Divide that by 207,000, you will compute 50.1%. So in short, of your total liabilities and equity, 50.1% comes from your retained earnings. Okay? So again, these are our discussion on horizontal and vertical analysis. So what are the disadvantages of using horizontal analysis? Different firms may adopt different accounting practices. In that case, the common ratios may not be directly comparable. So for example, your inventory. If the company uses a specific accounting policy that is different from your competitors, then how are you going to compare the figure there? Okay? 
then even same firm may adopt different accounting standards over a period of time. For example, me, I use uh, weighted average this year, while next year I use FIFO or first in first out. So I cannot compare because I use different accounting policies. Okay. So before I end our discussion for today, let me leave you a thought. Kenichi Ome. It says, analysis is the critical starting point of strategic thinking. So I hope you learned something from our discussion today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Bye guys!